Hello. Good, good day to you. Good morning. Good afternoon. Whenever you've seen this video, hope you're having a pleasant day out there. Well, I got this young this young lady up on here again, and this time she says black men need to stop dating white women. Let's see why she feel that way. Let's look. And 
then Sunday when he rose again. Very critically important. Days of significance. And then when he rose, that day became known as the eighth day. So, um, yeah, so it is, uh, it's Good Friday. All right, St. Valois, what's happening? Salty Balls, what's happening? Now, our topic today, our topic today, and we have a couple subtopics that we will discuss. But our main event is black woman tells black men to stop dating white women. Black woman tells black men to stop dating white women. And don't you know, at one point, she even says, stop dating Neanderthals. And I find this interesting. She's, a, of course, she's pro-black. And I don't have any issue with the name pro-black. I think it is fine and normal and natural to prioritize the people from your own tribe. Matter of fact, that's how tremendous wealth is created within communities. I have no issue with that. But we know what's happening to Andre 416. What's happening to Guy Incognito. We know that pro bat I'm sorry, that pro-black comes with a lot of extra baggage. You know, the black woman is God. You know, a double and triple down on the gynocracy. What's happening? Gregory Scotland. This belief that goddess Mother Earth, that the black woman was the first organism. There's a lot that this comes with that I don't co-sign. But simply as a moniker pro-black, I may style myself as a pro-black so long as all parties can be called to task. All parties are accountable. All parties take responsibility for their contributions or for their debauchery. And of course, black women don't mind being celebrated for their contributions, black girl magic. However, when it comes to pointing out issues, critic criticizing behaviors that are not conducive to a healthy community, a healthy society, that are not only damaging others, but actually are damaging them also. That seems to be an issue. Thank you, Gregory Scotland, with the $5 support saying, I don't trust most of the pro-black women. Many have shown to be fake. All about them, especially baby mamas. Yes. Thank you very much for that support. And what's happening to Dolomite? We've got 45 people in here. 
and presently we only have 28 likes. So please like, share, and support the show. Saints here. Yeah, and of course, what's happening of uh, Friedman's Journal? Of course, Saint Seer is right when he says being pro black just means being pro black woman. That's the general problem with pro black. Um, I interviewed Daryl Davis on my conversations with Dr. Thunder series, and uh, this is uh, maybe a year ago at this point. Uh, maybe not quite a year ago, but I don't know if you know who Daryl Davis is. Um, really a profound gentleman who, he's a black man. He has been responsible for befriending and converting away from uh, the Ku Klux Klan hundreds of white men. Hundreds. And the way that he's done it is by sitting down with them and actually having a conversation. sitting down with them and having a conversation. And in his house he has stacks of KKK robes which were given to him by these KKK members and he keeps them as memory memorabilia he wants to constantly remind himself that conversation conversation can be powerful and how much one person could do what's happening Bureau Hammer what's happening Darth Will like you and in our interaction, in our conversation, I told him that I was pro-black. Well, I didn't say that. I said that I was a black nationalist. And on the surface, if you said you were a white nationalist or if you said you were pro-white, we know that people would have an issue with that immediately. And there's baggage associated with certain terms. And so, of course, I described in more detail what it was that I meant. I'm not an integrationist. Well, that doesn't mean that I think that the races sh should intermingle. What's happening, Mr. Gosmo? That's not what I mean. I'm saying, historically, when you look at integration, it has been profoundly damaging to the black community. See, during the time of segregation, black folks had to depend on each other. They had to trust each other. They had to provide for each other. And so even if the belief was that the white man's ice was colder, what's happening, Golden Child? Even if the belief was that the white man's ice was colder, they had no ice, they had no access to the white man's ice. So they still had to deal with the black man's ice. But when when integration became the law of the land and busing, I call
call it forced integration. It totally changed the dynamic. It totally changed the dynamic. We know that as a part of the sort of original sin of this country, slavery. That white men have always had access to black women. We know that. This is part of it. Yeah, and we know that and we know that it wasn't just black women that were being forced. It wasn't just black women, it was also black men that were being forced. Being emasculated. I was watching Tia San Johnson last night. Shout out to Dr. Johnson. What's happening, Slick Rick? What's happening in Detroit 313? And one thing that he point out, pointed out that I thought was a really good point. And it's something that we don't really think about. It wasn't until 2012. Can you imagine this? What's happening, Ghost Automatic? Can you imagine this? It wasn't until 2012 that they changed what it was the definition of rape to accommodate men that were being sexually. 2012. So in other words, the term EPAR, just spell it backwards, try to keep it safe for you too. The term EPAR, the way it was defined was such that it did not include, but from a definitional perspective, it did not include when men were being violated. So all that stuff that was going on in prisons, all of the stuff that has happened to to men historically, none of that stuff was was seen as EPAR because it was a definitional thing that it was only women, <laughs> and of course. That has done a masterwork on the perception that only women can be victims. No, it's not just women. It's men too. But I digress. We know that white men have always had access to black women. Uh, perhaps they did not marry them. But they... Still no. Ryan Reynolds here for Mint Mobile. It turns out one of the fastest growing segments of people signing up for Mint are people over. Just the number of live viewers with your likes. So the issue, so the issue that I have is you you can't just be out here doing stuff for everybody. You must prioritize. You must prioritize. And by being out here doing all of this extra save the communita stuff, you're going to be less effective at your primary role, which is to provide, take care of your family. Primarily, and in, in particular, your, your kids. What's happening? Uh, uh, what is it? Okay. Gematria. Gematria. G Gematria. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. If I'm, I'm messing your your name up there. Um. 
in D Rock Ten. I think I said uh, I shouted you out earlier. Um, and then, of course, uh, one of our always in the chat, always checking it out, even when I say stuff that is triggering. The Freedmen's <laughs> Journal uh, with the five dollars support. Is extortion. Give it to the children's or they'll murk you and destroy the neighborhood. Darks always have their hand out. Get gone and stay gone. <laughs> Dang. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm going to take everything from you. Because as far as I'm concerned, you're saying that it's okay for me to be out here homeless and, and, and down and out. And not all homeless black youth. I was a homeless black youth. I didn't have no criminal record. And I wasn't no criminal. Okay, so there it is right there. Um, there's the sort of autobiographical bias. Uh, the autobiographical bias. There it is. Where she was down and out. So she wants other people to take care of other people that are down and out. And actually, I don't actually see that as actually a bad thing. You know, um, I, I, I can't read your name. Um, I don't know if it's Hagatrix. Uh, you have some strange characters in your name, so I can't. I don't. I can't read your name, but. Good to see you in here. And maybe you can put something in the chat to, 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 so I know how to pronounce your name so when I see you in here again. I like to shout folks out, especially new folks. But, you know, I understand, you know, wanting people to be taken, taken care of that have a similar situation, a similar past, and advocating for them. That's, a, that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. I don't like the guilt tripping aspect of it. But did it not cross my mind like shit? All these people out here, all these black people that pass me by, they see I ain't got nothing, they see I ain't got, got much, and they just passing me by. And you can't say you don't have anything, because you do. You have a lot, but you're okay. Long as you can be accepted by white people, you're okay that, you, that other black people are out starving and hungry. And it's not because, oh, they criminal or they doing this and they doing that. No. We're under the systematic racism and oppression of white supremacy. 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 But like I said, I'm starting an organization that's going to be helping black people. And that's going to be helping black youth. And once we get the black community up and rolling, for those that wanted to, you know, pop off on other black people, keep that same energy. Keep that same energy. Because guess what? Your access gonna be denied. And all you coons that was in, in the comments, I wrote down all your information. I got a buddy um, that knows how to decipher codes and stuff. She's threatening people that have dissenting views. She's on YouTube. Listen, listen, listen. She's on YouTube, which is ran by opinions, by people commenting, watching their videos, doing comment videos, and she's threatening. What's happening, UFO Kamikaze? Threatening that she gonna get her uh, her educated, lame, smart brother Find out who you are. She's threatening people. That's what she's doing. <laughs> That's a different approach. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's 
going to work. I don't know if that's going to work. And it also underlines and proves a certain thing that I find to be disproportionately true. Is that folks that are on this save the community stuff and this sort of kind of socialist, Marxist sort of construct, they, they're in support of that because they want to be able to weaponize the system against you. If you won't comply and get in line, I'm going to use the system to crush you. Rather than having arguments that can stand on their own, and something that you're selling or something, an approach to doing something that has its own merit that other people want to get on, on board with. No, it's not that. It's I'm going to use the system to crush you. See, this is, this is one of the reasons why, I got to tell you, I never understood and still don't understand why brothers in particular, but black people in general, why we would ever trust big government with the way the government has been weaponized against us. Why? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Thank you very much, Salty Balls. I want to hear this video right quick with this young lady. This is it. This is when we find out. Good question. Student body math proficiency. What? What do we say? It's. Another very interesting clip that was shared with me by Sister Monica. Thank you um, again for all that you do, beloved. Uh, and all of you who share uh, stories with us, we appreciate it. Thank you so very kindly. Uh, this one right here kind of rubs you the wrong way um, already. Um, it seems like uh, racial things are always at the top. And a lot of people don't understand why. Um, it is so in your face. It is so obvious, right? And this is why these things are talked about so frequently. Um, a lot of people don't understand what's going on. There is definitely a power struggle going on. And I'm not even talking about in the natural. The natural is obvious. I'm talking about the power struggle that is going on uh, in the spiritual. That's what I'm talking about. So what we're looking at here is this black teen, um, this image of this black teen and this uh, white young man here. Um, it's going viral for how, uh, for how this white young man asked her to the prom. And so what we see is an extreme insensitivity towards uh, so-called black people who are descended from slaves. Very insensitive. So he asks her, he says, I know I'm not cut, but will you pick me? for prom. Take a look at this video clip. I thought I saw it all. I honestly thought I saw it all. I remember I saw a photo shoot with someone in chains married to one of our counterparts. That in itself was, but this, let me move out the way so y'all can see what, what's going on back here because the gag I get, I know I'm not cotton, but will you pick me for prom? Really? Really? And honestly, I don't even know what I'm more mad at. The fact that he had to call Cassidy to make this sign? Or the fact that Sis actually stood there, held up the sign, and smiled. Smiled like you're proud. Like the poster is worth smiling about. The Stockholm Syndrome is real on this one. Like, are you serious? Like, are you, are you okay in the head? And I want to know another thing. Who actually took the picture? <laughs> I want to know who took the, you know what, had to be his mom. Had to be his mom. Because ain't no mom that look like her gonna take a picture like that. I, 
I think I've seen it all. Okay, so I don't know if you all are seeing this the same way I'm seeing it. Um, when I look at this image, I see a young woman who is proudly holding up this sign. She feels proud. She looks like she's honored to be asked to the prom in this way. Put a number one in the comment section if you see the same thing. Because she doesn't look like she's upset by it. She doesn't look like she's bothered by it. She looks as if the whole idea, the whole concept flew right over her head. So put a number one in the comment section if you see what I'm seeing because this young woman looks as if she is okay with this. She looks as if she's proud of this. She looks like she's honored. Like, oh my God, he's asked me to the prom. Well, the Bible says my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. This right here is just one small, minute example of that. This is one example of that. So this is an open insult. Uh, this is a very, very clear example of Ray Sism. Of course, she would not hear that if, if I were to say this to her directly. Oh, no, he didn't mean it like that. You don't know what you're talking about. She would go into defense of him. This right here is also a very clear example of how so-called black people are not teaching their children anything about history. This is also a very clear example of how so-called black people are just clueless as to how we are supposed to function in this world. Because this right here is a disgrace. That's what it is. It is also dis disgusting. That's what it is. Huh, my goodness. My, my, my. But anyway, this young woman, she seems to be very proud and honored. She feels like, um, I got I mean, l listen, I would like to see a video where she at least checked him or something. But no, she's holding up a, a sign as if she's okay with this. Already he's establishing that in his mind, he looks at her like she is a slave. Because he says, look, he says, I know I'm not cut, but will you pick me for prom? Does she look like a cotton picker to you? Does this look like the 16, 17, and 1800s to you? To him, there is no difference. In their minds, because of the dark powers and principalities that still do, deal with them, because of the demonic forces that still deal with many of their minds, he still sees a S-L-A-V-E. He doesn't see a prom date. He, see, he sees someone that, because he, he didn't say, oh, he didn't speak of, speak of it as though it were something from the past. He spoke of this as if this young woman is an active cotton picker. Y'all catch that? And look at him, standing up there all big and bold. Like he is the prize in the picture. The problem is our people don't realize that they are the prize, especially women. The Bible tells us that you are the prize. Let me tell you how. The scripture says, who can find a virtuous woman? Because her price is far above rubies. Far ab above rubies. You should make yourself the prize that the Bible talks about. Don't be nobody's you know. Oh, These new menu so items at Panera are perfect tens. They also each under ten dollars. Okay, guys, this is crazy. I've got to share with you. I was paying a hundred. If you do a social media search on YouTube or TikTok or Facebook of black women with white men, you will find a lot of stuff. You'll find a lot of couples enjoying themselves and a lot of women excited that white men are looking to date them. I did not get bagged by a white boy last night. And I'm actually kind of happy about it. <laughs> I never allowed things like this to occur in my life. But 
He can get it. He can get it. And a lot of black women are excited about the experience. Sometimes dating in the black community can be redundant. So getting a new opportunity to date somebody else from another culture can bring a lot of excitement, cultural diversity, and another experience in dating. It can change you forever. We'll talk about that very soon. One mechanism that people can get to know each other is on social media or dating apps. It makes it really easy for people who would never come across each other to get to know each other, especially for men, because men may not feel comfortable approaching a lady or vice versa. And this is the case of this young lady by the name of Cheryl Turner. She was on a particular text app when she met this particular guy. I won't mention who the guy's name is right now because well, it's not that important. She met a guy and she ended up meeting up with the guy and this happened. Cheryl Turner was an outgoing 19 year old from New Iberia who had the most contagious laugh. Now her family says they'll never hear that laugh again after her body was pulled from a lake in northern Louisiana. I'm Anna Fisher, your Iberia Parish reporter, and I sat down with Cheryl's father and her twin sister, who say they feel more supported by Catahoula Parish's law enforcement than their own. She told me, I'm going to see you, and I love you. And that's the last time I saw my daughter. Michael Turner is the father of 19-year-old twins. Cheryl, I can't even, I don't even know how to describe how she was growing up. Younger by two minutes. Sherry Turner says her older sister, Cheryl, was always the outgoing one of the family. Cheryl was just outspoken. Once she got enough, she gonna say how she feel. On December 31st, the family says Cheryl and her mother had gotten into an argument. She put the key in her back's mailbox, packed up all clothes, and left. According to Sherry, outbursts like these weren't uncommon for Cheryl to have. It wasn't until they lost communication. It wasn't like her for all those days to not even message us, nothing. That the family says they reached out to Iberia police, filing a missing persons report for Cheryl on January 3rd. According to the family, they experienced radio silence from New Iberia police after that. Everything died down. It got quiet. On January 24th, Sherry says she was contacted by a detective from Catahoula Parish. He told me, he was like, um, I don't want to disarm you, you know, I don't want you to be worried, but we found a body. A fisherman on the Wichita River had reportedly found a human torso floating in the water without anything else attached. Attached. That was two months ago. We didn't know where she was. Somebody found her body. We didn't know who did it. Just two weeks ago, another news clip came out like this. It's a case that law enforcement says they've never seen before. I'm Anna Fisher, your Iberia Parish reporter, and I'm following up on the investigation of Cheryl Turner, a new Iberia woman whose body was found dismembered in a river hours away from her home. Back in February, I sat down with Cheryl's family after her body was identified by the Catahoula Sheriff's Department. It went from us busting our head about if it was her or not to how did she go? Now, a little over a month later, Detective Dwayne Littleton tells me information is slowly trickling in. We have been uh, reaching out to uh, several of the social media platforms that the victim had been using, um, trying to identify who she's been in communications with and who all she had been talking to and possibly identifying who had who she had went to stay with, stay with. But now we have an update. We have an arrest for a guy by the name of Anthony Pierce Holland. In a world of mass production, some things remain unique. Holland Jr. And guess what? He admitted to it. Now remember, the Text Now app is how they met. And again, she had family problems and with her mom and arguing as you just heard. So he arranged to pick her up at her mother's house in New Iberia on January 1st. Then he returned to his home in Ochita Parish. But what happened next was shocking. He said after he brought her to his home, he uh, put his office out. He unalived her during a SEX act. After realizing 
she was deceased. He, um, you know, dismembered her remains, put it in bags, and dumped it in a tributary of the Oshita River, along with the knives she used in all her possessions that she had with her. This sounds very familiar, doesn't it? Rewind! I covered a story about a young lady by the name of Shade Robinson, who was excited to go on a date with a white man, Maxwell Anderson. Here's what happened. Court documents say Anderson and Robinson were meeting up for that first date on Monday, April 1st. They started at a Menominee Valley bar, the Twisted Fisherman, before heading over to Dukes on Water, which is in downtown Milwaukee. That phone is then traced to right here, Anderson's home at 39th in Oklahoma, and we know Robinson was never seen again. This new exclusive video appears to capture the moment investigators took Maxwell Anderson into custody near his home at 39th in Oklahoma, following a whirlwind investigation that started April 2nd. If we can put the picture of Anthony Pierce Holland Jr. and Maxwell Anderson next to each other, it is clear to me one thing is going on. Both of these guys look deranged and demented. It is almost obvious, and I honestly believe because some of the young ladies, and both these young ladies are 18 or 19 years old, they believe that these guys are maybe Caucasian, that they are trustworthy. But this is one of the reasons why they're preying on these younger ladies, because they just don't know. And again, I will tell ladies, and anybody in the black community, just because you feel like somebody is a race or one different race from you, that people are automatically trustworthy. Haven't we learned about what's going on with the whole young Jeezy thing? Like, listen, that, that's how people get in. They feel like, oh, I'm white and, you know, you're black. And you probably would guess these guys are probably poor. They probably don't have a lot of money. They probably don't have a lot of things going for them. They take advantage of the situation and they're sadistic. So now you have young ladies, you know, in the black community who are losing their lives. And we keep hearing about things like this to these guys. I know what you're going to say. Well, you know, black men can also be black too. Yeah, that's that's true, right? We, we get that. But at the same time, I don't think that these women feel that these situations can happen with these guys. And it's happening on the first date. They're going to these guys' homes on the first date without knowing the guys, without understanding what's going to happen, anything. And they're just trusting these strangers and bad things are happening to them. I honestly believe that, you know, hey, if you're a sister and you're going to go out with somebody, you don't really know them, use your better judgment and try to go to a public place. Now, I said it's going to save you, but do not go to someone's house, you know, when you first go there. Also, tell people, look, I'm, I'm taking a picture of your license plate. Um, I'm giving your license plate to this person. I don't know you. This is who I'm going with. So if they want to try something crazy, they might think twice about it. Not sure if it's going to help, but protect yourself. So guys, what do you think? Car insurance for $19 a month? It's real, and it's stupidly easy. Here's how. Assalamu alaikum, welcome to my channel, Runaway Slave. This channel was created primarily to promote my self-published masterpiece. The N-word is no secret in this service. I wrote this book after I spent over 10 years as an officer in the United States Secret Service. During this time, I've been a lot of places, met a lot of interesting people, seen a lot of things, received a lot of training. But more than anything, I learned what true foundational institutionalized or systemic workplace racism is and how it affects my people. If you would like this masterpiece, just click the link down in the description, click the Amazon box up in the banner, and it'll take you right to it. Okay, let's cook. White man Mike Oliver infects over 40 Kenyan women with HIV, releases the pictures of some of the women he spoke, he slept with. Okay, so this disgusted knuckle dragon beast, this Mzungu, has been chilling out in Kenya at one point, leaving his droppings and scraping his knuckles on the ground. But in the meantime, he had fun by flexing his money and showing people how easy it was to sleep, to sleep with these Kenyan women. And he's even been boastful about it and nasty and evil and arrogant after he did it and he has HIV. A man identified as Mike, Mike Oliver has been trending for the better portion of this week after his photos with different beautiful ladies surfaced on the internet. The man has sensationally revealed on, revealed on his Facebook timeline that all the ladies he has had the pleasure and moments with to with to extend engaging in sex should instantly go get a checkup. Going by the online photos, Oliver has been enjoying the vast pleasure times at the Ani Beach with different K 
Kenyan ladies, this disgusting Mzungu has been out here with his with his ugly face, you know, sleeping with these black women, arrogantly giving them, hoping to give them HIV and disease because it's easy to do and he know he can get that off. Mike Oliver, HIV positive, the white foreigner that dated and dumped over 40 Kenyan women within a period of three months. He disappeared, leaving behind 12 broken marriages and 17 pregnancies. This disgusting knuckle dragon, white supremacist, colonizing beast. And these are the guys that come to these countries. They go to African countries and, 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 and people really kiss their behind, you know, wait on them hand and foot, treat them like they gods, you know. Personality worship is, is the biggest form of spiritual illness. These women, Mike Oliver, finally reacts after he was accused of infecting Kenyan ladies with HIV. So this man has been going on social media after he doing what he did, after word got out, after people know, and he's been talking cocky. He's been talking cocky. This is a shame. Married women in trouble as husband spots her with Mike Oliver in controversial photos. So he was sleeping with, with women were doing this who were married. Women were doing this who were going to be married. They were in relationships. He embarrassed them and it, and it pretty much tore their lives up. Tore their lives up. Here's some, look, look at this right here. Here's a, here's a man who, who's seen his, 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 his bride-to-be in a picture with this savage, this disgusting, smelly savage, Mike Oliver. Look at this. He caught her, and she's trying to say, no, that's not the case, it's Photoshop. But then it gets a little deeper, she's busted. This is nothing but white man worship. This girl, what these, I, 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 I seriously doubt that most of these girls are poor. I doubt that they did this because they're poor. Yeah, a lot of girls want money, they'll do things for money, but I believe that this was more so primarily white man worship. These girls in some of these countries, they just worship a, a white man. I remember there was a, over here, over in, in, over here in the States, I remember like seeing like some old, old, I'm talking about reptilian, fossilized, shriveled up looking white guys, right? A couple of them I actually knew from DC that I worked with and they would have, a couple of them had young, young African wives. Oh, um, before I, I, get, I, get, I guess I want to show you something right quick. Um, this is not the good ladies. Um, oh boy, it's not looking good. You know, just on the front, you know. And even that those women are overseas, but it's like, man, some people would do anything just to, just to, just to be with somebody. You know, it's okay to have attraction of someone of a different race, but man, when it comes to their character, man, it's like, really check out their character. Don't be so desperate. Don't be so, man. Just gonna show you right quick. It's like what's going on with the mindset of of, of the women, particularly some of these women out here. And I hate to say it, I know the men got the issue, black men got issue, but wow, what's going on with some of these black women? Wait till y'all show you this. Safest, most secure place to hold and trade your cryptocurrency. Before a 21 year old Memphis woman reported on United States airline flight, Memphis International Airport police found 56 pounds of marijuana in her luggage. The woman was charged with 
possession of a controlled substance with the intention to manufacture, deliver, or sell. Charges carries harsh penalties. One is now free after posting a $5,000 bond. This airport police caught the woman Sunday after finding her luggage busted open on a United airline bag cart. The woman's name tag was not attached to the bag. After locating the woman's luggage, she gave airport police permission to search her bags. The drugs were found. She was subsequently arrested. Another one. The woman was arrested after an Uber driver was carjacked in Whitehaven early Sunday morning. MPD stated that LaShondra Cox was driving for Uber at around 2 a.m. on April 14th when she picked up a man and 18-year-old Denitra Coleman. Quote, my main job is an educator from Memphis Shelby County Schools. I did Uber to make extra money as an educator because I don't make a lot of money. Coleman was arrested the next day and admitted to taking part in a carjacking and driving Cox's stolen Honda away from the scene. Quote, keep them. Cox stated, if you catch these people, keep them in jail. Like, don't give them a low bomb because all they're going to do is do it again. Cox told police that she was supposed to drop off the pair near the intersection of Bowenshire Avenue and Danbury Avenue. But when she arrived at the destination, Coleman kept asking her questions like whether or not her 2020 silver Honda Accord has a tracker directly on it. Ms. Cox also stated that, quote, I told her I have an Apple AirTag on it, even though I really don't have any trackers on the vehicle. Then after that, a light-colored Jeep was circling the area where she was supposed to drop the pair off, and a man in her car put a weapon to the side and demanded that she get out of the Honda. Quote, he opened his door and leaned up and brandished the weapon at me. Ms. Cox stated to police that she tried to reach for her phone, and the man told her, quote, you might as well just leave that as well. She said, I was like, just please don't harm me. Just let me go. As Miss Cox backed away from her vehicle, the pair sped off in the stolen vehicle and the Uber driver, along with Miss Cox's phone and car, police stated that the pair stole her Smith & Wesson 38, which was hidden inside the vehicle. A GoFundMe has been created for Miss Cox. Coleman was charged with aggravated robbery, carjacking, and possession of a firearm during the commission of a dangerous felony. Another one. Coleman was arrested for stabbing her ex-boyfriend multiple times. Alexandria Twilley is charged with attempted second-degree murder. On Sunday, officers responded to a wounding call at the home of Shallow Rock Cove. The victim told police that his ex-girlfriend, Twilly, threatened to take his life and stabbed him with a kitchen knife after an argument. Police also stated that she chased the victim outside of the home with a handsaw after he was stabbed. The victim was stabbed in the head, and there were multiple stab wounds to his chest and cuts on his arm from the knife. He was taken to a hospital in critical condition. Twilly has a $75,000 bond and is expected in court on April 24th. Another one. Nearly two years after police state that a Memphis mother had her life taken in front of her children, the suspected shooter has been arrested and charged. Memphis police arrested 22-year-old Brianna Gilmore on Thursday on charges of attempted first-degree murder, possession of a firearm during a dangerous felony, three counts of reckless endangerment of a deadly weapon. Police also stated that on the night of March 28th of 2022, Gilmore got into a fight with another woman in the parking lot of Hillview Apartments in South Memphis. The two women were arguing beside the victim's car, which held her three small children, a four-year-old, a three-year-old, and a two-month-old baby. Police stated that Gilmore resorted to gunfire and wounded the mother of three during the middle of an argument as her three kids watched. When first responders arrived, they found the victim laying on the ground next to her car and her three kids still inside. The mother was rushed to the hospital in critical condition. Just days after she was at the hospital, the victim was able to identify Gilmore as the shooter to investigators. Gilmore is being held on a $200,000 bond and is set to appear in court Monday morning. Another one. An arrest has been made in the incident that took place Friday in downtown Memphis. Vernicia Liggins, age 24, is charged with assault, aggravated assault, and reckless endangerment with a deadly weapon. On February 9th, around 10.50 a.m., officers state that they responded to a shooting call at Danny Thomas Boulevard in Alabama Avenue. MPD states that there was fluid on the roadway.
witnesses on the scene told police that a woman was hit and taken to Regional One Hospital by a private vehicle. The witnesses also stated that the shooter left the scene in a two-door turquoise infinity. At the hospital, the Violent Crimes Unit spoke with a victim who stated that she was having issues with ligands due to them dating the same man. The victim stated that she and ligands got into an argument at the intersection of Danny Thomas Boulevard and Alabama Avenue. That is when they both got out of their vehicles and got into a physical fight. While they were fighting, Liggins reportedly got a weapon from her infinity and bow bowed the victim in the right thigh. MPD state that after Liggins injured the victim, she stood over her and kicked her in the back of her head. The victim was able to positively identify Liggins in a six person photographic lineup as a person responsible for the shooting and kicking her in the head. Vernicia Liggins is being held on an $80,000 bond and is scheduled to appear in court on Tuesday morning. Another one. A Memphis woman was arrested on Tuesday. We'll buy your house for cash, no matter the condition. Stuck with a property that feels more like a burden. Another one. A Memphis woman was arrested on Tuesday in connection with a incident in Mississippi last year. Jessica Harris, age 35, was arrested around 1 p.m. by the United States Marshals Two River Violent Fugitive Task Force and was charged with first degree murder and shooting into a dwelling. Harris was wanted in Lee County, Mississippi for a shooting that led to a man's deceasement. On July 8th of 2023, Verona police officers responded to a shooting at an apartment complex in the 100 block of Reese Street. When they arrived, they found a deceased victim, later identified as 22-year-old Christian Ramos. After further investigation, warrants were issued for first-degree murder and shooting into a dwelling were issued out of Lee County Circuit Court. The United States Marshals Two Rivers Violent Fugitive Task Force was asked to assist in the investigation which led them to the address in Memphis. The task force approached and surrounded the home on the 1400 block of Oboro Avenue. Officers state that Harris was arrested without incident and is awaiting extradition back to Mississippi. Another one. A woman was arrested after police stated that she kept sending DoorDash to her South Memphis neighbor home, then attacking her with a blade during a fight. Victory Stepney. Age 29 is charged with aggravated assault. She will be held in jail on a $15,000 bond. On February 12th at around 10.07 p.m., officers state that they responded to a Benford Street around 10 p.m. Monday for an aggravated assault call. The victim stated that she was involved in an ongoing feud with her neighbor, Victory Stephanie, who she said kept sending DoorDash to order at her house to disturb her. Monday, they got into a confrontation about the orders. PD stated that Stephanie pulled out a blade and went after the victim, injuring her on her chest, her backside, and her left arm. Stephanie then dropped the blade and ran off. After police arrived at the scene, they found the weapon. The victim was also treated on the scene for injuries to her arm. Victory Stephanie is scheduled to appear in court on Thursday morning. Another one office employee in Hickory Hill was arrested after police stated that she scammed a tenant into cash apping her and stole her rent money. Erica Norris is charged with theft of property and computer crime. She's being held on a $2,500 bond. On August 7th, 2023, Memphis police stated that the victim filed a police report stating that she received a text message from her leasing office at Waterstone Oakway Apartments. She was sent a reminder text to pay her rent or give them a call. The victim stated she continued to text the number and was told that she could make a payment to dollar sign motion taken cash app account. After she said 1200 for her rent, she found out that the leasing office never received the money. The leasing office employee stated that Erica Norris was the person who was texting the victim after they recognized her phone number. According to the reports, Erica Norris is a former employee and has previously scammed other people out of the rent money. Investigators state that they received multiple reports filed against Norris for scamming people using the same phone number. Cash App gave investigators inf I'm going to stop it right here because the video is getting kind of long. But um, I guys just got a question after viewing these, these and it's not to, to pick on 
a certain demographic of women. But it's just that why is what's going on with the, with some of their mindset, some of young women and their mindset. What's going on with them from make you know, just going out on dates to for guys you don't even know or going to extreme like in and, and just go going on deep in like these women doing can't handle the their emotions, they can't handle their temper, they can't handle things in life and it's really, really 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 messed up. So and then and it, I wanna make a remark to the women woman earlier. Um that's the reason why you have when it comes to a certain type of mindset of women a woman maybe that's why some men are not attracted to that kind. And this can can go across all contrast of women, white women, Hispanic women, Asian women doing some crazy stuff. But damn, you know, it's just that on both, you know, levels it's like, wow, this it's just crazy. And I don't, so it's just gonna show you when it, the whole point of this video is to make to kind of make you understand that when it comes to a woman for a young man or any Asian man you just have to w watch their mindset and and if some women you should be glad that you you didn't get yourself involved with because you see how they handle everyday life situations who's violently they tell you this story when they get on a dating show, but you see on the last video how some of them handle certain issues. They don't know how to handle, they don't know how to control their emotions. So they act out viol violently, even with another woman. I mean, it's just that, and it seemed like it came from a saying, not that it's, it's not just Memphis, Tennessee, but it seemed like women, Across the, some women across the country got that mindset. It's like, wow, you know, you just got to really be careful who you get involved with, guys. Who you really get involved with. And what type of woman. And if don't get mad at those certain type of women, go to other men. To a black man out there, don't get mad. <laughs> don't get mad. Don't get, don't, get, ooh. You know, maybe, maybe it's like they, if they was, maybe the other men can get them kind of see things in a different light. Then, then you can't, they don't want to listen to you, black man. I'm just saying, you know, don't, don't, the one, to ones that have the problem with it. Some of us don't have a problem with it. But the ones who do, this is the reality of it. So, hey, you know, it's really messed up hearing stories like that. And I don't take no pleasure with and point things out like that, but it can you can learn from something. Not it's not to put down women or anything, a certain demographic of women, but to show you what's going on in their mindset. What's going on here? And this is the reason why some men are staying single or trying to find a woman who has a sandy sanity right because of what decisions that they make and some women basically put their stuff in, in harm's way like the mother two videos and they found the hard way at a young age so hopefully in the future that maybe by seeing the other young women make us that they will make the same mistake that's the whole point about this video so I hope it if anything, just be careful with whoever you meet out there. Any of you decide to go with a person of a different culture, see what's in their, what's their mindset. You know, and that's the whole point of this video. So I hope you, hope you like this, this video and it, it kind of opens your eyes. And late women, be careful who you get with. And guys, be careful who you deal with, who you lay down with. Because you never know what's out there. Alright then, you guys. Be blessed. See you on the next one.
Take care.